Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop for part four of making a pretty awesome Damascus steel Viking battle axe. It's fantastic to have you here. Hope you enjoy. So, this has been annealed overnight, so it's now soft as butter. Well, sadly, not quite. Otherwise, it'd be very easy to do what I have to do next, which is I'm going to grind this. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the big grinder in the grinding room. Respirator on, indeed. We're going to take the big grinder, we're going to take off the hard scale coating, do the bulk of the stock removal that needs to be done to this before we move on to the steel grinder, the little tube of 48, as well as the Bailey grinder. We use both of them in conjunction to shape this and start making this look awesome. Dogly, so we're getting on pretty well with the roughing out of this. You can see basically what I did is I took the large grinder, we took the bulk of the hard scale off. Once I was done with that, the, the angle grinder that is, I went to the Bailey grinder. That soft contact wheel is lovely for kind of getting those contours in there and uh, still kind of removing a decent amount of the weight that I need to reduce, a decent amount of the material that needs to be reduced so we can have a thin enough edge. And of course, I cut off the back that pole, which is neat, because it means I have a little bit of spare material, and this also is going to be able to better approach the style of the Viking battle axe that I'm going for. Now, to better get this to look like the Viking battle axe that I'm going for, I now need to profile in here on both sides. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be having a look at some more photos of the historical examples I've been looking at, and then we're gonna be going onto my little 2x48 monster of a grinder, and I'm gonna be turning that platen over and using those small idler wheels that also double as contact wheels, and that'll allow me to get in there and form this, contour this on either side to the shape that's gonna kind of hopefully best replicate what it is that we're trying to go for.
So here is how the axe is looking now. I've got the profile pretty much there. It's pretty interesting because the shaft is actually coming down from here. There we go, that'll work. The shaft is coming down from here and you have that most extended piece right at the top. It's an interesting design and that's kind of why I wanted to give it a go because this is very different to anything I've tried before. So I used, oh my goodness, that grinder is unbelievable. Those contact wheels are pretty awesome, and I was bearing into that thing, and it was just chewing through metal. I used that those contact wheels. I used the small one at the top and the bottom, the, the larger one at the bottom. They're also idler wheels. I used those to do all of this, and it was just lovely. It was really nice, comfortable grinding, getting in there. I still have a little more work to do, and it's going pretty well. I'm excited, and it's actually moving along a lot faster than a lot of my other projects have when it comes to the grinding. So I'm very excited about that. Right now, however, it is lunchtime. How are we doing, Chef Sam? I don't want to talk about it. What, why didn't you want to talk about it? Tacos! Sam, it's actually fajitas. Hang on, what was it? You're guac be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> you guacamole be kidding me. You guacamole be kidding me. <laughs> Sam's been trying to make up some uh, some some food jokes. How and I I think they're going pretty poorly. My Germans are the best. Is that the best? <laughs> ah, so much of this is getting edited out. Okay, I have now eaten lunch. What a fantastic meal that was. Thank you, Sam, for your great cooking. Now I'm going to keep working on this. More grinding to do, but I dare say the light at the end of the tunnel is soon approaching for me to be able to start heat treating this. This is very, very exciting. We're slowly getting there and actually making better progress than I thought. Let's quickly take a moment to appreciate why it is that I sealed off my grinding room from the west of the, west of the workshop, from the rest of the workshop is because all of this dust gets made in here. And you saw, I swept the floor. Literally just a matter of an hour or two of work ago, and there is already dust absolutely everywhere. I swept this, like it's, it, it was pretty clean. And now already it is super dirty, super dusty. Took out the filters. I cleaned these a week ago. That's just a little pinch, see that? That's why I sealed the grinding room from the rest. And that is also why I shouldn't have even been standing in there without a respirator and let alone ever doing any sort of grinding without a respirator. That stuff is so important. And you know, I am petrified because for the longest time I didn't think it was important and I thought that it was just easier to not wear a respirator. It was not that long ago, maybe a matter of a year ago that I started wearing a respirator a lot more frequently and building this grinding room. It's certainly motivating me to have that respirator on every single time that I go in there and do any sort of grinding, so that's good. Okerly dokerly. So there is the axe. It's got a 60 grit finish all the way around and at this stage I'm quite happy to go ahead and go in for the heat treat. I have an issue however. This indeed is quite the issue. About... <gasps> oh! 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 I now have oil on my hand but it is gonna work. The forge is now lit, and I've been letting it warm up for a little while. I don't have the forge turned on high, obviously, because I'm going to want it at a lower temperature for the hardening process, but I want it on long enough that all of the heat soaks deep inside the refractory, so when I put this piece in there, I'm not sucking down the temperature of the forge too much, because otherwise then it gets difficult to, to balance it off and get it where I want it. I have this hunk of metal right here heating up, and the reason for it is the quenching oil gets a faster heat treat, and in fact makes the steel harder if the oil is warm. So I'm gonna warm up the oil by putting this piece in there. I'm now going to turn down the regulator to about 10 psi. I usually run this thing between 30 and 40 when I'm forge welding. And up here on the burners, I can control the amount of oxygen or air that's being let in. Since these are a venturi, 
The more I open this, the more air goes into the fuel mix. The more I close it, the less air goes in. That means that I can get a cooler temperature of flame. Okay, so I'm now gonna do a normalizing cycle. So we're gonna take this. We're gonna open up the forge, and in she goes. So of course the reason that I'm normalizing this is in the process of forging it, we're making the grain structure very, very large, and we're making loads of stresses across the whole thing. Heat it up, let it air cool, normalizing. It helps kind of equalize all the stresses across the whole piece. That means that then when we harden it, we'll get a better, stronger, more blade-like edge. It's been in here for a few minutes. It's coming up to a nice, even temperature. I'm gonna set it down there, and we're gonna let this cool just in still air. Oh my goodness! Look at that pattern! What? No! No! No way! Okay, this is now cooled down. I can touch it without burning myself. It's gonna go back in the fire, we're gonna heat it up, we're gonna normalize it one more time before we go into the heat tree. I put this in the oil, and it didn't go all the way, it got stuck. I, I, I jiggled it to the point that it did work. And I think I can get it out, yep, 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 I can get it out. So there we go. That was, ow, there's burning oil on my leg. That, uh, that just about fit, and it almost just about didn't fit. Now I'm going to run into my brand spanking new oven with this oil saturated axe. Okay, I'm gonna wipe off the oil, and we're going to temper this um, for a couple of hours at 220 degrees Celsius or so which should just work marvelously. So that piece is in the tempering oven, and I'm gonna probably leave it there for a couple of hours or so. And in the meantime, my friend Bruce, from Australia, how are you, Bruce? Hello, Alec, how are you? I'm doing very well. So it's great having Bruce here. He sells the Annie Ang Power Hammers in Australia. Thank you for being here, Bruce. Thank you, Alec. Thank you for making the time to stop by. Well, I figured we might as well forge something, considering, you know, he's a blacksmith, and, and this is what blacksmiths do when they hang out. You generally make something involving the blacksmithing thing that is the shared enjoyment pastime. So I think we might as well make something. What do you think? Oh, I reckon so. What do you think, Sam? I reckon I'm gonna film it. Are you going to film? Yeah, put Jamie out of a job. Great. <laughs> Jamie, you're fired. I'm joking, you're not. Please, I need you, I need you. You've got you to gotta keep coming back. <laughs> Bruce has pulled this uh, piece of steel down from one of the racks. We don't have racks, but it was on the ground. What are you going to do now? I'm going to forge a tong end on it, as it's known, which will enable me to use a pair of tongs to hold the other end, and I'm going to taper this out in a long, rounded taper. Okay, and then what are we going to do with that? Oh, you'll have to wait and see. Wait and see? How can you be doing this to me, Bruce? Have a great one. Thanks for your help, dude.
Bruce, the man of steel. Woo! Great seeing you, Bruce. Thanks for stopping know. by. <laughs> I've got to go and wash my hands now. <laughs> the axe has now been tempered, which is fantastic, which means that tomorrow morning I can crack on with some more final finishing and indeed the etch of this fine axe. And oh my goodness, this thing is going to be unbelievable. I cannot wait to see you tomorrow as we continue on with this. Thank you for joining me on this fantastic day, as all days are fantastic, here in the workshop. I cannot wait to see you tomorrow. There are two more videos that you can watch right there. If you're new, please hit subscribe because we make awesome, fun videos like this as close as possible to every single day. And we're working hard to make them better and better and better. Thank you. I'll see you soon.